What's going on guys, Coach Hayden here with Steel Strength Training. And in today's video, we're gonna be talking about two fundamental movements that we teach here in the gym. And that's the squat and the RDL. And with these motions in particular, you can apply this thinking to other exercises, but there are three core fundamental pillars that have to be present in any good squat or RDL. A lot of cues can get you there, but these are the things that we need to be looking for. The first with the squat is balance. So what I mean by that, if you look at my little oh-so artistic figurine here, we see that there's even weight distribution throughout the whole foot. This is our main indicator of balance. So that if we see the toes coming off the ground or the heels rising, that's not the best thing that we could be doing. We want the feet to stay flat. Secondly is depth. This is probably one of the most important benefits of the squat is that we need to be getting deep enough in order to be taxing the legs enough to get the benefits. So for us, what we teach here at Steel, we want the hips to get at least as low as the knees, if not a little bit lower. So that's why we have this little dotted line here and the hips are just below that line where the top of the knee is. So third is back angle. So once we've established balance and now we know that we're getting deep enough, we need the back to be at the same angle as soon as we start to descend. And this becomes most important, I find, through experience when the client starts to come back up. So if the hips shoot back and the chest falls dramatically, we are losing a consistent back angle. So some cues around these, often with balance, just telling the client to keep your toes down and keep your heels down or feel heavy weight throughout the whole foot, that helps. With depth, sometimes clients think that they have to stay super upright, unrealistically so, and that can cause things like the heels coming off the ground. Sometimes telling them to point their chest down to the floor or to push their hips back behind them as well as sitting down, that helps with that. So what happens when we combine all three of these pillars? Well, we get a good looking squat, but what does that entail? First is strength, because now we're strengthening the muscles that are responsible for the movement through a full range of motion. Hypertrophy is built into that as well, because as we load the movement and we do more volume, more sets, more reps, we're able to build up the muscles to make the muscles larger that are responsible for completing that movement. Thirdly is efficiency. So after we establish some consistent parameters of the squat, we can repeat those, which is our fourth uh, tenant there. So that is what establishes a great squat. Now we have the RDL. Same structure, we have three fundamental pillars. The first is hips back. So if you look at our little figurines here, with the squat, the hips are relatively low, pretty much just below the knees. But in the RDL, the hips are way above where the knee is. The hips are shot way back towards the wall behind you, and the knees are only just unlocking. There's a tiny bit of knee bend. That's the first thing. The second thing is keeping the weight close to the legs. Oftentimes, we'll see the weight swing away from the client, which doesn't really target the musculature that we're going for, which is the hamstrings, which we'll cover in a second. So we need to make sure that the weight stays close. Third is chest out. This helps with the same thing as well, the hamstring stretch. Um, but what you'll see and what you'll need to see the client do is to push the chest out and pull the shoulders back. And that becomes the most important as the client gets close to the bottom of the movement because the weight wants to pull the shoulders forward and the chest to cave. So we need to make sure that we keep the chest proud as we get close to the bottom. When you combine these three tenants, we get a great hamstring stretch, which is the number one primary target musculature with the RDL. There are other considerations with hinging motions, like there's low back, mid back involvement, but it's not the point of the way that we teach the RDL. Of course, there are strength and hypertrophy benefits to this in the same way that there are with the squat, um, but there's also a lot of carryover to the deadlift. And this is one of the main reasons that we start clients with the RDL first when they're getting kicked off as a client with us. Uh, so that when they do start doing barbell deadlifts, it's like muscle memory just kicks in and they learn it super, super quickly. That's pretty much it for today. Just a flyover of some movements that are probably very familiar to you as a client, or if you're new, or if you're a coach trying to learn the ways that you can walk your clients through the basics of these movements, this will cover pretty much most of it. Thanks for tuning in. Catch you guys next time.